Yo, I'm tryna get my sterling up in the city, so see we play. As soon as my child can walk, it's straight project and by pay. But know the verbal, as soon as I hear that whistle, we get straight to the action. Come on, lads, where's the passion? Do like Alamat at sea, we wear headbands for the fashion. If the defenders drop back, we counter and then attack them. I got my eye on the ball, I got my eye on the ball, yeah. Uh, I got my eye on the boat. Uh, I got my eye on the boat. Yeah, I got my eye on the boat. Ooh. I got my eye on the boat. We came here to talk basketball. We came here to talk buckets. Came here to talk hoops, and that's what we're gonna do. And being, I guess, we obviously want to hear your opinions first of all. And we're gonna talk about your beloved Celtics first of all. And the main question on the subject that we're going to be talking about is whether or not Tatum and Brown can lead the Celtics to a championship. Obviously, just to provide a bit of context, I think in the NBA, when we analyse the NBA, there's a lot of pressure put on young talent who produce early. And I think we're seeing that with Giannis in the case that, look, LeBron, Michael Jordan, they won their first championships at, what, the age of 28, 30? Mm -hmm. And Giannis is being put on some pedestal that he needs to win now if he doesn't win now he's a bust and all of that kind of stuff and the same goes for Tatum and Brown I mean this is probably their worst even though they're producing numbers wise this is probably their worst season in terms of how the Celtics are operating how they're how they're flowing in terms of the basketball how many losses they have over the course of the season like they've been consistently getting to the final obviously bar the Kyrie year. so th they're they're a good duo and when we're looking at wings we're talking about do they have the right pieces around them? So the general chit chat or the general question, first of all, to you, Adam, is in your opinion, your beloved Celtics, do you believe that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown can lead you to a championship? Uh, right now, no. Long term, yeah, for sure. Um, they're still figuring out a bunch of stuff. There's still a lot that they need to improve on themselves. Um, I think that everybody's expecting them to be leaders straight away. And these guys are young, like, at the end of the day, that's like saying to a year six kid or a, or a year 11 kid, like, right then, we want you to lead um, the college team now. So we want you to step up and play at college and we want you to lead them to a championship at college. Like, mm. you're playing against bigger guys, uh, more developed. Uh, I know these two guys have been in the league for a few years now, um, but at the same time, they still need to develop themselves. They've made the conference finals three times now. But every mm. time they haven't done it as the lead, uh, neither of them have been the primary option, uh, like consensus primary option. Uh, so doing it as a secondary player or as a role player and then being asked to do it as the lead ball handler and the primary scorer and the offensive focal point, those are two hugely different things, man. I think that's going to... That takes a while to, to get used to. You'll see that in every sport, guys will step into bigger roles and it takes a year, maybe two, for them to really grow into that role before they can start producing. Long term though, yeah, I think if they're still in Boston um, that if, and they continue to develop, they will eventually win the championship. Let's let's dive into a little bit more in terms of the long term then, isn't it? Because short term, I think we know, you know, you guys, it's, it's, been, it's a bad season. It's probably Tatum's worst season in the league. Yeah, you know I mean, but um, yeah. Well, if we're talking long term, then how how do you feel the team should be built? Do you know what I mean? If you do want to be a championship caliber team, because we know you know the Clippers are having issues building around the two great wings. Do you know what I mean? Uh, even um the Bulls they had to implement the triangle with the two great wings to have success. Um, how do you feel? And Danny Ainge, you got know I mean. There was obviously um we know you had uh, the assets. You had Kyrie. You obviously got Kemba now. Uh, and there's questions of Danny Ainge. Like everyone thought Danny Ainge was the great Danny Ainge, but there's some questions now because the, the, it feels like the team's in limbo. But long term, how do you feel the team needs to be built? And do you have questions about whether Danny Ainge can do that? I mean, I think the first thing you need to do is take stock of what's working around the league. Uh, you mentioned the Clippers are struggling. The Clippers are pretty much in the same boat as the Celtics, except their wings are more developed and they're like, you know, top 10, top 12 level players. Yeah, um, but yeah. the, the, the issues are the same. The only difference is Kawhi Leonard can bail you out of an extra 10 games a year where Jason Tatum just isn't there yet. Um, I think that you'd need to figure out how to stretch the floor a little bit more. Um, a stretch five would work. If you don't have a stretch five, you want a rim runner and then you want a, an additional ball handling wing. 
So you'd want somebody at the four that can put the ball on the floor a little bit. I also think that having a score first minded point guard isn't what you want when you've got two high um, yep. high scoring wings. I think that that's taking shots away from them and it's also making it much more difficult to get the fluidity in the offense um, because mm -hmm. with Kemba, you need to run that pick and roll. You need to allow him to get into the lane off a screen. So by doing that, you need to set up first, unless you run drag screens on, on the fast break. But if you, you can't, that's not something you can do every time. So yeah, I think that um, a point guard that can distribute a little bit more, that isn't afraid to penetrate. Um, do you have anyone in mind? Uh, I, I went on record a year ago and got torn apart for this, and now everybody agrees with me all of a sudden. Um, Lonzo Ball, I think, would be great. But the only thing yeah. is, Lonzo Ball doesn't penetrate after dribble. He, um, he's yeah. very much a terrible player. inside the paint, man. Yeah. Terrible. Like, just, and you don't even want him to finish, right? You just need him to have enough gravity to force a rotation before exactly. he the ball out. And if you watch him this year, I've watched a lot of Pelicans this year. Um, yeah. He does most of his work on the perimeter and he'll tee guys up all day from there. But when you've got wings that you need to slash, like Jalen Brown, you want him to catch the ball on the rip through uh, during the slash and then pull up mid-range or get to the hoop. You need somebody that's going to penetrate to open those lanes. Um, yeah. I do think you could teach Lonzo that. You know, he just he just needs to add a bit of aggression. Um, he also brings great size, great, great length. You can he's effectively a wing that can handle the run yeah. and run the point. Um, but that's what I'd do. I'd bring in either a ball, another ball handling wing, a stretch or a stretch five, and they definitely need to upgrade the point guard position. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. When I, do you want to go first, Darren, or should I? No, I was just gonna say, um, you must be upset, fam. Miles Turner was on the table. You could, if the, we're doing the uh, the Gordon Hayward deal, I know you must have been frustrated that you didn't not get anything really, for Gordon man. Hayward. Like, um, not really. Like, there's a lot that Miles Turner does good, but um, there's a lot that he does bad too. Like, I think his defense is very much based on blocking shots, and that he can get caught um, trying to bait fouls a lot. He, his body positioning isn't great. He has to his stance is a little bit too high. Um, hmm. So it's quite easy to beat him after dribble. So that's why you'll see a lot of his shots are coming from like the rear view when he's chasing guys down, or he'll get blocks when he's playing the drop. Um, but as a floor spacer, yeah, that's great. I, but I just think that everybody's looking at the numbers and the block numbers and saying, man, Boston really missed out. When in fact, if you look like there's a lot of possessions where he would have been worse than Daniel Tice defensively. So I'm not too upset about it, to be quite honest. Uh, I was a bit annoyed at the time, but uh, I got over it quite quickly. When when I, when I think about the Celtics, and um, personally for me to first answer the question, and it might seem a bit outlandish, outlandish, but I'm not even trying to go down that lane. But it's like, do I think Jason Tatum and Brown can be one, two punch to win the Celtics a ring in the future? Of course, the easy answer is to say yes because they've got potential. But if, as I'm looking at them now and looking at the way that the Celtics continue to construct their squads or their roster, sorry, I don't think so. I don't think they'll be able to lead the Celtics to a ring. And the reason why I say that is because you have to look around the league and one thing that has definitely been more blatant to the eye in terms of NBA fans is across the the UK across the US is that situations are what win championships. When you get a perfect situation and a perfect matchup, perfect blend of players, you more or less likely win the championship that year. When you look at the Lakers, they weren't the favourites. But when you look at the matchup in terms of the guys you you had matching up together, that's the reason why they won. You look at the Raptors when you look at on paper they necessarily shouldn't really have won the ring that year however when we Gasol it was the perfect blend of players mixed together win now win now win now obsession win now win now win now and then what that has led up to is not being able to tie down Kyrie who said sorry am I am I still am I still there yeah you're good you're good Oh, I'm good. Um, not being able to tie down Kyrie, for example. You look at Gordon Hayward, who is now having... You, you're seeing Utah Gordon Hayward at the Hornets, but he couldn't even show a glimpse of that when he was playing at the Celtics. And that was just down to the situation that he was in. He just wasn't the player that they needed to build around that to build around that team. And it, it just makes you... It begs the question, is Danny Ainge building this roster correctly? 
there's nothing wrong with Tatum and Brown having experience in the finals, which they do have. But I would have rather you built around them so that they could potentially lose a couple of first rounders and gain the experience in being the number one option. Let them let them let them make mistakes. Let them be the main guys because it's it's not all about winning now. You don't have to win now when especially when they're at that age. And we were talking a bit about it off off um off the recording before we started recording. And Giannis is the typical example of that. There's this obsession that Giannis, because he's the M back to back MVP and he's the defensive player of the year, he needs to win a ring now. And if he doesn't win a ring now, his legacy look, as much as we know that the Bucks are deficient in a lot of the things that they do, especially when they get into the playoffs. Giannis has 10 years, like 10 years, eight to 10 years of his career still left. And he still has the ability to dominate. I still think he can dominate. And he's not even hit his prime yet. And he's already got his back-to-back -back MVPs and his defensive player of the year. He can basically use the rest of his career to just focus on winning the champ championship and tell the Bucks, look, I want this guy, I want this guy. And this is what we're going to use to win a ring. So... I just do I I guess where I'm coming from is because I haven't used stats, it's more been a an opinionated thing. It's do I have trust in Danny Ainge to build the right roster for Tatum and Brown? And I'm not sure. That's where I put myself up on the fence where I'm not sure that the right roster will be built for them to win a championship in the future. I mean, there's part of me that really agrees. Um the one thing I'll say about Hayward, that's the first point I'd like to kind of push back on a little bit, is like mm. um when Hayward was acquired, he was acquired to be the number two guy next to Kyrie Irving. Nobody knew that he was going to um, basically fracture every part of his leg. You know what I mean? He's, like, no. Nobody knew that was going to happen. And him being out afforded Tatum more court time, and which expedited his... Um, his development. Yeah, he did. That's what's going to happen. Uh, the same went for Jalen Brown. So by the time Gordon Hayward comes back and actually is healthy, because when he came back, he... He had to he had a relapse in that summer so then he had to have another operation then play himself yeah. fitness so by the time he was healthy he's now gone from being number two to number four in the pecking order and Literally. and then your your impact on the game completely changes because now you can't be putting up the numbers he put up in utah you can you don't have the usage that you have now in charlotte um, there's a lot of and your, your confidence reduces yeah, as well exactly so now you defer too much because you yeah. haven't taken as many shots as what you're used to um, and yeah. I think that went against Boston and I genuinely think that they should have looked to try and move Hayward but how can you when his value is so low because his performances yeah. are so bad um, the Kyrie was just that that was just what it was it was bad um, they thought he was staying he said he was staying and he decided to leave um, and then you have to go, you know, you have to flip Terry Rozier to bring in Kemba Walker, which to Terry me was a panic move. Career, yeah. yeah, I think that I think that's a panic move. Um, mm -hmm. I think that move is the one that's really hamstrung them right now. Facts. Uh, yeah. uh, I think that's the move that's really holding. And I think Kemba's great. I just don't think he's a championship point guard. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think that the first thing you need to do now as Danny Ainge, as you say, you need to put players around people that, that blend that fit it's the same in every sport you need that chemistry and everybody yeah. needs to bring something different first things first consolidate some of this youth on the bench you know you've got you've got aaron neesmith romeo langford carson edwards grant williams um robert yeah. williams you've got yeah. those five guys are uh, all one two or three years in the league pritchard as well Pritchard, um, no, you keep Pritchard. That's what you, you don't. You keep Pritchard out of this. Pritchard can. Stay. Um, <laughs> he, he's doing good. He's doing good. But out of those five guys, move three. You know what I mean? Try and try and flip one, and a I don't know a Jeff T. Like try and get off of Jeff T. Because that's a disaster. And yeah. give up a, a high upside young guy and try and get back a vet that can help and start bringing in some experience because that's where this team goes downhill. It's not when Tatum and Brown are on the floor. It's Just when enough, yeah. it's when they're off, or when you put Tatum on the floor and say, right, you need to be the focal point of the offense, but no one around you can do anything because they're all just bad. Mm. And th that to me is the biggest issue. That bench I, unit is where the struggles come. Adam, if I can quickly interject though, and Darren, I don't know if you want to come in on this. But a lot of the reason why I said what I said is that I do understand the context. Of course, look, injuries happen in the game, so we we, we can never t we can never like say. This is going to happen, so we're getting ready. Do you know what I'm saying? And we always use the example in football. Look, Liverpool couldn't have 
um, imagine getting 18 injuries, for example, this season. So my thing is, though, in terms of what you did have, you now look a- across the rest of the league. Jason, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown aren't the only budding young talents in the league now. You got Donovan Mitchell, who's in the perfect of perfect situation. Like we say all the time, perfect of perfect situations. Jazz got a good organization. They know what they want to do. They're looking good. They're developing every single year. You still got guys like Damian Lillard, who you never know what could happen. He's still got about three to five years left at the top, where you just never know. I'm not saying he's going to win a chip, but you just never know. So that takes each year you don't get to the NBA Finals, for example. That's another year off your chance to win a ring basically i'm stacking it's basically jason tatum jalen brown versus the rest of the field i have to go with the rest of the field based on the current evidence because when i look around the league and look at situation i I look at the pelicans they're a championship team in waiting if they just get the right core group the players that they want to pick around zion brandon ingram the right right coach the right coach exactly so it's, it's basically a Tatum and Brown versus the rest of the field. And unfortunately, I have to go with the rest of the field just based I, on I, other people. And that's fair. Like, I, yeah, there's exactly. no way I can argue back from there and try and keep a straight face because there are, you've got guys like Zion, you've got guys like, as you say, Donovan Mitchell, there's some younger guys, uh, Ja Morant and Triple J over in Memphis are doing good, uh, are going to be doing great things. Um, Charlotte have got Lamelo Ball, who's looking like he's legit. Luca and KP. Yeah, Luca and KP. There's these young guys are dotted everywhere, but the league has always been that way. And and the way the way you do it is you start to bring in ring chasing vets. Like exactly. the one guy before they landed Tristan Thompson, the one guy I was like um, speaking about the most was trying to land Derek Favors. I thought Derek Favors would have been the guy that would have shored up this defense massively. Mm. Um, he he went back to Utah. And now Utah have two of the best defensive bigs in the league, literally rotating on and off. And their, their defense now is ridiculous, which has allowed them to play um, at the speed that they play at. So I do agree. I, if I had said, no, I think these two are guaranteed to win, then um, I'm lying and I'm just saying it for the sake of saying it, which I'm not going to do. But I do think that these guys are just as able to, they're just as likely to win a chip as a lot of these other young guys as well, because it all yeah. depends on situations they find themselves in in a year or two and how the rush to construction happens in a year or two yeah exactly for me i have to look at danny ainge man because i look at this season and i think it's a wasted season like that there's there's no way you can you know have championship expectations i don't know if maybe this was a development year that he had in mind but there's too many young guys on the bench do you know what i mean you can't have two young stars and then surround them with a bunch of young role players that you're trying to develop. Do you know what I mean? You're basically uh, just a young team trying to grow. Do you know what I mean? That's fine if that's the, di- the direction that you want to go in. But it just, that wasn't the path that you were on last year or a couple of years ago when you had, you has, you just picked up Kemba. Do you know what I mean? You you had Gordon Hayward, you had Kyrie. So I don't know if uh, what, what Danny Ainge is trying to do, but I, I don't know. I think he's got to be decisive. Like if he wants to do, if he actually wants to, you know, let them develop, maybe, you know, uh, trade uh, Marcus Smart for a pick, trade Kemba for a pick, just do something that commits to that direction. Or, you know, trade Kemba for, for someone that can help you right now. But in terms of the actual team, before we move, I, I feel like they, I don't think that they can be your two best players on the championship winning team. Unless the roster is built very specifically. Do you know what I mean? And they improve off the ball. Because I feel like you need at least one high-level playmaker. Do you know what I mean? If you want to win a championship. And uh, I believe this season, they're bo- you guys are bottom five in assists, um, hockey assists, all the um, the passing stats. You guys are really low in, in those categories. And I think that's evident. Not Obviously, that comes down to the fact that the role players aren't really great. But also, I think Tatum and Brown, they're scorers. Do you know what I mean? Both of them, they're two-way wings. As we said, the Clippers are having the same issues. You need someone that can play make. And um, unless you can find yourself a Draymond Green, or as you said, Alonzo Ball, but even Alonzo Ball, can he play make for the whole team? Do you know what I mean? That's I think... The biggest question. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I think to get to the next level, playmaking is is where you need to improve. That's why they've been forcing the ball into Tatum's hands so much. Um, you'll exactly. see... Especially in the game. Yeah, you'll see New Orleans are doing it with Zion at the moment as well. 
like um, you give guys enough rope to just say, right, we don't care if the pass doesn't make it. We don't care so much about the outcome of the set, but we want you to run the offense now. And we want you to figure out how to get guys involved. And Tatum, when the thing with Tatum is, and Brown's very similar, uh, Zion's actually a lot better at this than what them two are, is when the first initial offensive action breaks down, so when a team counters your pick and roll or they counter your handoff, Tatum and Brown will go to ISO, where, yeah. re where what you want is you want them to, to be willing to mess up, right? So run a secondary offensive action and look to get guys involved. And this is what Brad Stevens is trying to do. He's trying to force them to evolve into playmakers. Um, and I'm fine. If I knew that that was going to happen and we were seeing slow, like incremental growth, like I don't care how bad it is then. Do you know what I mean? Mm, like, that's I, what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm more than happy for it to be tough to watch, um, to be very inconsistent, because I know that there's a very specific game plan that they're working exactly. towards. Uh, but that's why Tatum's usage rate is through the roof at the moment, not just as a scorer, but as a ball handler, because they are trying to force him into becoming a better playmaker. For that same reasoning, um, but I think you also need um, you need role players that can play, mate, too. You need to be able to bring a guy in off the bench with eight minutes left in the fourth and be like, go create something you don't need to be the guy to go get us a bucket but go start teeing guys up and okay. uh, they don't have that either which is why harrison barnes is so um so heavily spoke about right now in boston circles before we move on last question i wanted to ask was brad stevens man um highly regarded do you got what i mean he's supposed to be the new popovich and i think he's you know he's a good coach quality coach but um, where do you stand on him, Black? Can he lead you to a championship? Um, is he a top five coach in the NBA? Top five young coach in the NBA? Yeah, top five coach in the NBA? No. Um, I think Brad is very similar to when you're watching young guys. Like you'll see he you see he's learning too. Like you see him implementing new play calls all the time. If they're not working, him like one of the biggest things with Brad is um, he gives guys too much rope. If you go, if you're struggling to, and your shots not falling, he'll leave you out there to see if you can figure it out. Hmm. Veteran coaches aren't about that. This is this is a league you're in to win, right? There's, like this is a business. If your shots aren't falling, you're sitting on the bench for the next ten minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Popovich is the king of that. He'll he'll bench you after thirty seconds if he finds if you missed the rotation. Like I've seen him do it. Yeah. Um, but you learn that that's learned that ruthlessness comes with years in the league and just being so annoyed with like i don't want to put up with your shit no more sit down and i think brad's gonna develop that too um so i still think he's the right coach i still think he's going to be 10 years time i think we'll be talking about him as a top three coach in the league um there was a time where we didn't think spolstra was going to be as good as what he is where we were questioning whether he would even make it through the lebron years now he's regarded as the top five coach in the league um, it takes time. It just just the same as players develop, coaches need to get you know to develop too. Uh, but he does need to improve his game management. For I sure. think when For I sure. just to quickly um um just backtrack. So my roundup point um was going to be that it's just obviously a lot of a lot of talk was on playmaking and bringing in that playmaker who can make a difference. And as we're seeing, look. When you have two wings who can potentially be the back like, fulcrum and the core of your team, you're going to need a playmaker. As the Clippers found out, we were talking about Campbell Walker. We can look at the Clippers in their first year. The reason why it didn't work despite all their talent is because if you look at the point guards that they had, they either had um, Lemon Pepper Lou, who needs to create his own shot, and then mm -hmm. Patrick Beverly, who's not really a playmaker and is uh, sometimes can be seen as a headless chicken. So... You just need to make if, getting a playmaker who isn't the main man on a team is like one of the hardest spots to fill because you look at you look at the Lakers. Rondo was like it was basically we were relying on playoff Rondo. It wasn't Rondo basically did not play the whole season, so it was almost like we're banking on playoff Rondo to show up and show himself, and he did. He did that to himself. So yeah, it's gonna be tough. But in terms of what I think the Celtics need to focus on. And I take a I take a page out of Vogel's book. It's the defense, man. Defense needs to be worked on first. And I think the best rosters or the best teams, championship teams, are built when defensively their quality. I think there was a stat that I was um I, I think it was Max who pointed it out that in the last ten years, no championship winning team 
um, was outside the top five in defensive efficiency, something like that. And when, when you look at where Boston are right now, I believe they're like 16th, 17th in defensive efficiency, which is basically bottom half, really and truly. So, yeah, the defence needs to improve. Of course, that happens when you have the right players, and I don't think they have the right players to implement a nice defensive scheme. However, you just got to look at Brad Stevens and say, cool, you've had your breakout period now. Brad Stevens is now becoming an established name within the, the NBA ranks, so he needs to make sure that he isn't making a name for himself in the bad light as opposed to the positive one. So, yeah. And that's fair. I mean, that's completely fair. And Boston, all of Boston's good runs have come off the back of being one of the better defensive teams. in the Exactly. Yeah. Um, I do want to, and this is an excuse really, and I've told people that have been on my show and other shows, I've been, this is an excuse and it's a pretty crap one. But you can only coach the talent that you've got, right? Like you bring in Tristan Thompson, you expect defense to be okay. Marcus Smart and Tristan Thompson should be a decent defensive team. Jalen Brown as well. Jalen Brown, one of the best um, point wing. of attack wing defenders in the league. Yep. Jason Tatum's one of the best passing lane defenders in the league or developing into that. Um, it's just been bad. It's been real bad. Transition defense is terrible. I mean, mm. if you go from my Twitter account, you'll see I break down their uh, defensive rating by quarter. And I do that every two weeks like clockwork. Um, they're constantly one of the worst teams in the fourth quarter. I think they've not come out of uh, the bottom 10 in like the last two months. Uh, they just suck. And a lot of that comes down to youth, unfortunately. You know, they, they don't have the veteran leadership they need. And if we want to play 2K for a moment where we've got that trade override button, uh, <laughs> perfect guy for this team, who I think for the playmaking spot would be Nikola Jokic. Put Jokic with Tatum and Brown, and it's Ridiculous. over. You, you can then have a... Uh, you can That's then have a <laughs> Just put the override button in there. Let me do my thing, man. We'll, uh, we'll make it. <laughs> but nah, before, before we move on, Daniel, and I think because we were saying it's, it's definitely hard to find role players that can play me. I definitely agree with that. But that's you just got to look for them vets, them smart vets. Do you know what I mean? Like a David West, like, like when the Warriors picked up a David West, guys like that, guys that they're not scorers, but they, they know the game and they have an all round game. So they're not looking to get their own bucket, they're looking to move the ball, get guys shots, Igadala, guys like that. If you can pick up guys like that. Then, then that's you're going in the right direction. There's no like um there's a correlation between teams that overachieve and teams that have Jay Crowder on that roster. <laughs> like there's, there's a legitimate <laughs> correlation there, right? Thanks. Um people except when he played with LeBron. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work too well. But it it's been great for him since uh since he left Cleveland. Literally no, uh, 100%. and then like Marcus Morris is another guy guys sleep on a little bit as um as a connector guy, a guy that connects player to play, plays to plays. The only thing with him is um, you have those Marcus Murray sh Marcus Murray shots that um, are just real, real ridiculous. You know what? Like he was in Boston for a year, dude, and I loved the guy and I hated. Uh, him he, the Brad Stevens, he closed every game basically for you guys. Yeah, yeah, because he's that type of guy. He makes the right reads, makes the right pass, knows when yeah, to leak sure. out, knows when to drop back, knows when to pinch. Like he's just a smart, heady player. Uh, and those are the guys you need, which is why I really, really wish they got Derek Favors, and uh, it just didn't work out, man. And now they're they're where they are. It uh, it sucks, but it gives me a lot to talk about every week, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> just 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 as a final point, then, in, with a one word answer, how far do the Celtics go in the playoffs? Second round exit. Yeah, second, second round. round. See, They'll lose to one of the top three teams, the Nets, the Bucks, or the other Sixers. I will premise that by saying that's if they make a trade. I'll, I want to reevaluate True. if they make a trade. But True. right True. now, second round True. exit. True. True. We'll see. I mean, if 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 a guy like Vucevic comes in, I mean, you just never know. Like really and truly, that that could be a game changing trade. Really and Harrison truly, Barnes yeah. is the guy, dude. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm yeah. hearing Harrison Barnes though. Harrison I just Barnes don't like it. Guy. I don't like his contract though. That's the only thing because I think they they paid him quite a lot. It's like twenty two um, mil. 22 mil a year, but like yeah. he's coming in as a he can play make, he can defend, he can yeah. he can shoot. He's a third play or three or four. Option. Yep, third or fourth option guy on the wing. Um, has a championship ring. You know, knows what it takes to win. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Paying 22 mil, let him come in and just fill Hayward's role, uh, and it's cheaper than what Hayward was and younger with less injury history. Yeah, uh, I'm down yeah. then. Um, and then it's a finals, a conference finals exit, which is where they got to that. <laughs> 
fair. fair enough, fair enough. Now nah, it's good to dice up the, the Celtics and chop it up a bit. I got my eye on the ball. 